Guys, I'm not sure if I've ever told you this, but if you want to grow on Twitch, you're gonna have to make content on other platforms. More discoverable platforms. Platforms like YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or whatever. And then you're gonna gather those followers like you're the shepherd and you're gonna bring them over to Twitch. It's literally the only way to grow on Twitch nowadays. Unless you're like the best player in the world at a particular game, or maybe you're already really good friends with a ton of massive Twitch streamers you can make content with. Are you either of those two things? No? All right, let's go back to making content then. So you're dedicated, you're willing to learn to make content, go the distance, where do you start? Let's go over five essential tips to start making content and, you know, maybe start growing that Twitch channel of yours. So let's just get started and jump straight into tip number one, which is hitting the like button and subscribing to my personal account for live streams and other content. JK, JK, that's not number one. No, number one is actually a tip that I've used personally to turn my streaming content into YouTube content that's got over a million views a month on a brand new channel over the last couple months. It's a simple trick called flashback recording and you can use it to turn your live streams into good full quality content that's really easy to edit. The way it works is if there's a moment on stream that you think would work really well for a YouTube highlight or a TikTok, or in my case, a YouTube short, you hit a button either on your stream deck or on your keyboard and it goes back and records the previous moment that just happened. I feel like this lighting is a little bit too dramatic. Let me move it, one second. That's better. Now it's not quite like you're learning how to make content from a Sith Lord. The way this works for me is I have my vertical camera plugged into an HT60 Pro and I have Elgato's 4K capture utility running in the background behind OBS capturing that camera in full 1080p resolution all the time, every stream. When someone asks me a really cool question on stream and I answer it and I feel like, oh, that was a really cool answer, that'd make a really good YouTube short, I hit the flashback recording button, it retroactively records the entire thing that I just shared. Then we take that footage, we edit it together, we throw it on YouTube shorts as well as on TikTok, and some of them have legitimately blown up and gotten me quite a few new subscribers. Both Elgato and Aver Media Capture Cards have a flashback function like this, so you can capture your cameras, and then if you wanna capture your gameplay at the same time, you can use either OBS's replay buffer or even third-party software like Metal, which is what I use. That way, if you wanna do high-quality gameplay clips on social media like this one, you can capture both your gameplay and your camera separately and edit them together later. And speaking of editing, let's have the next couple tips be how to actually edit content like this. And to do that, I'm gonna have the newest hire at the company, my little friend Scott, who's actually been editing most of the videos on the channel lately, explain this. Take it away, Scott. Hey, I'm 5'10 and I'm still growing. 6'2 <laughs> and he thinks he owns the world. It's crazy. What's going on everybody? My name is Scott and for the past couple of months, I have been the editor on the Alpha Gaming channel. <clears throat> you mean junior editor. Sam, what are you doing in this video? Just uh, keeping an eye on you, all right? All right, just keep it down, all right? Today I will be showing you three tips on how to edit your Twitch clips into interesting and discoverable content. Most of this stuff can be done in free editing software such as iMovie and DaVinci Resolve if that is your editing software of choice. But I don't wanna keep you guys waiting for too much longer so let's hop over to the computer and uh, let's start editing some clips. So now that we're at the computer and I've got Final Cut open, we're gonna wanna drag your clip onto your main timeline which is gonna kick us off into tip number two, which is watching your clip in its entirety. Now, the reason you're gonna to wanna to do this is because it'll give you a little bit of an idea of the pacing of the video and maybe some edits you wanna do on it. So let's actually take a look at this clip and see what we're working with. How do you blow C4? I don't know how to do it. Spam buttons. Found it. So that's the clip we're gonna be working with here today. Now I noticed at the beginning of this clip that there was a big silent section of it. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out that so-called fluff in the video to help speed up the edit. Now, once you have the formatting done for your video, we're actually gonna move on to tip number three, which is subtitling. Subtitling can be utilized not only to keep your audience's attention, but also for comedic effect. Let me show you an example. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold down control and hit T, which is going to create a text layer above your footage. And you're going to want to drag that all the way to the end of your timeline. Now for me, I like to change the font of the text. So I'm going to click on the text layer itself, click on the font, 
and I'm going to scroll all the way to the top and my choice of font is Avenir Next. Now to give your text a little bit of a pop, what we're going to want to do is scroll all the way down on this menu. We're going to want to click on Outline and expand this menu down here. And for me, I'm going to choose the color, let's say red for this. We're going to exit out of here and you're not really going to notice it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to click on Width and we're going to click on Three. And there you can see that there's a nice bright outline around the text. So once you have the outline around your text, what you're going to want to do is you're going to watch through your clip one more time, and you're actually going to subtitle exactly to what is said in the clip. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So once you've manually put in all of your subtitles, we're going to put a little bit of a spin on it to give it that life that it needs. So what we're going to want to do is let's go specifically with this phrase spam buttons because it's only two words and it's a little bit spaced out. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on it and we're going to actually watch it back to see when he says the words spam and buttons. Spam buttons. Let's do it right here. Spam it seems like he says buttons right there. So we're going to click on this up here and we're going to visit the top right of the screen and click on this real icon right here. And we're going to see the crop effect here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag the right side over to where it cuts off just at the word spam. So when he says the word spam buttons, it's an easy translation over to that. Take a look. Spam buttons. Found it. So after all that is done, we're actually going to move on to tip number four, which is keyframing. Keyframing is actually a really simple technique that can emphasize maybe a reaction or something that's going on in game. So let me show you an example. Let's revisit our timeline really quick. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm actually going to find just before his reaction, which is right about here. And I'm going to click on the main timeline and actually blade this footage. Once you've done that, you're going to click on this right side footage and you're going to line it up just the beginning of the clip. And we're going to visit the top right corner of the screen up here. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click this button right here, which is a keyframe, both for the position and the scale. Now we're going to find the point where we want our keyframes to stop, which seems like we want the zoom to stop right about there. So we're going to click on the timeline once again, and we're going to scale in, and we're going to adjust the position to where we want this to end, which will be right about there roughly. Found it. It's a very easy and simple zoom in. Now I'm noticing that the zoom is actually a little bit longer than I like. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on the clip once again, and I'm going to hit control V and I'm going to take these two keyframes and I'm going to push it over just a couple frames. So let's watch that back really quick. Found it. It's a little bit of a faster zoom. I think that looks better. Now that's all done. Let's take a look at the final product. How do you blow C4? I don't know how to do it. Spam buttons. Found it. Well, there's the final product. I hope you guys found this helpful. If there's anything else that you guys would like to know how to do, maybe a little bit more advanced graphics and zooms, let me know down in the comments down below. But I'm actually going to send you guys over to Harris for the fifth and final tip. Guys, how did Scott do? Let him know in the comments down below. And if you think he did well, please hit the like button. Let us know. That'd be great. This last tip is a doozy and it's probably the most important one. Streaming is incredibly time consuming and especially if you go live multiple times a week for hours on end, it can be difficult to find time to actually plan out your live stream. I know when I'm done streaming, I don't even wanna think about it until the next time I go live because that's the way an introvert feels but you have to. Tip number five is planning your live streaming content around what would make good YouTube content or TikTok content or whatever platform you wanna focus on. Ludwig, I would say, is probably the master at this. He uploads a YouTube video like every single day and almost every single one, if not all of them, is all live content that he's planned around editing and posting to YouTube later. Even some of my little conversational shorts that I showed earlier that I've gotten a ton of views and I did on stream were thoughts that I had the night before that I knew if I could kind of steer the conversation during my stream the next day in that direction, they would do really well. If you're a content creator, practice creating well-rounded content. But that's all five. Which one was the most helpful to you? Leave a comment down below and let us know. And if you have any other editing questions, feel free to jump into either mine or Scott's stream. I'll link to both of them down below. We both stream multiple times a week. Jump on in, hang out and ask. I hope this was helpful and as always, 
Happy streaming.